you, you know, I'll start with giving Kennesaw a lot of credit. Um, by the same token, the late game execution on our part was flawless. You, you get out, score 21 points from the three point line. It's tough to overcome. That's tough to overcome. Uh, and, you know, we make 23 out of 27 free throws. I thought that the key to the game, though, is they made some tough threes. They banked in a three. They, they uh, four seconds on underneath out of bounds. We played as good a defense as you could play, and, and they hit a three. I mean, we uh, sometimes you just got to give the opponent credit. They made tough shots. We knew young blood and, 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 uh, Rogers, we we knew what was coming, in. and you know we did such a job last night. But getting them credit, I mean they go twenty seven and sixteen, but we're in foul trouble the first half. We overcome, we overcame so much tonight. But if you, I don't know if y'all can hear, that's our locker room. <laughs> now I'm in the gym. There's a hallway and then the locker room, and it has been like that since we've been in there. And they're not celebrating the victory. They're celebrating each other. No matter who it is on a night, that's who they choose to celebrate because it's not about an individual. I mean, Dylan Penn, golly. You know, and, and CJ, how big is that steal? I mean, he gets a steal. I mean, we can't get a stop. He gets a steal and a, and a layup. And, and you can, this is a game where you can take a film and you can't just keep saying if, because if you say if for us, say if for them, and you'll have a virtual tie. It'll be a tie, you know, whatever to whatever. So you just have to stay in that moment and, and make play after play after play. But we did overcome foul trouble. Uh, we overcome a team that, that played tremendous. I mean, the second half, you know, they shot 56. The second half, we shot 62. Well, what can you say? Fire away, guys. Uh, Scott, you know, what was kind of going through your mind when, you know, you all got out, got a good, um, good control of the game, but then, you know, Kennesaw still, they kept playing hard. They kept, or they kept playing. They kept, you know, trying to make, make plays, make things happen. And slowly but surely you see the lead shrink, but you all don't really, I mean, we talked about you all getting over just the fact of late game execution, but what, what was your thoughts and feelings as you saw that kind of happening not again, but, you know, again, for lack of a better term. Well, not every game is going to be a perfect wrap package. I mean, we've been in this situation before. You know, we go, we're down 20 with 19 to go. I mean, you have to, you have to understand how you get the lead, and then you got to understand how, what it takes to maintain the lead. We didn't do a great job of defending the three or coming up with a long rebound on a three. So what do you do? You, you practice, you put them in the exact same situation again. We still had a foul to give, and we were ready because we had practiced but just by a color of executing a foul if we were only up three. So our confidence in our late game execution comes from practice. Teams are going to make runs. The only way you ever prevent a run is play defense. Hard to defend when they hit some very, very difficult three. Sometimes it wasn't our defense. Now, sometimes they got them too easy. They were getting layups off, no passes. Well, that that again, that comes down to team defense. But uh, we were able to adjust as the game went on. It doesn't always work. I mean, it's not perfect. We were trying to make adjustments. Sometimes you got to give them credit. All right. Well, obviously, you know, it's nice to leave uh, Georgia with two more conference wins. But besides that, what were some of the biggest things that came out of this weekend for you and the team, whether it's, you know, something personal or something you saw from the guys as you all were working out? It, it's like it's if you look at the big picture, okay, two tough games against against uh, Lipscomb. Then we're really worried, and we come back with two two tremendous wins down at Gulf Coast. Then the, the tough games against Stetson that, that we just fight it through, and then we improved again this week. You know, I don't care what Kennesaw's record is. I know what I see on the film, and the numbers don't lie. And they shot – their starters last night shot 58% against us. They shot 50 as a team. Their starter shot 58 last night as a team. So our respect comes from that, not, not some record. And he's done a great job coaching young guys. And, and you know, but it's not like we, we have continued to adjust. And we'll continue to adjust again this week. And we'll continue more late game situations. 
to just, but we've got to be, you know, I mean, we played good. I mean, we played good. I mean, you right. should, you look, we shoot 60.4 for the game. We shoot 85 2 from the line, only 10 turnovers. But the difference in the game, you want to break it down. We had seven steals last night, we had 10. That's how we got our lead. You know, you got to give them credit. They took care of the ball better. And they have, you know, these back to back games, one thing that happens, these teams adjust. You know, they adjust. I mean, they're going to come out and fight. I mean, they do. Everybody's going to. It's good. Hey, Scotty, uh, this is Tom Lane. Uh, are there adjustments or tweaks that you kind of continue to make with these back-to-back -back games? Because that was kind of a learning process going in this year. Absolutely. We'll keep learning. We keep adjusting. I thought, what you know, we, weren't, we didn't walk through it all today because the only time we could get to gym was 9 a.m. And that's coming off a Friday night game. So we walked through in the, in the uh, meeting room at the hotel. You know, that kind of broke. But that's a decision when you're playing a 4 o'clock game and your pregame is going to be at 1. Uh, you know, we, we prefer to let them get treatment in the hotel, sleeping in, and, and, you know, well, sleep in. I mean, we had film this morning at 9 o'clock, so it wasn't really a sleep in. But th these players, what happens? If you defend, Tom, one situation, then you see that same situation the next week, that light goes on. And it's like, yeah, I got this. I know what he's talking about. If it's a flare screen or a, an underneath out of bounds look. So what happens is your preparation, it's like, okay, now let's reflect back. Remember, so-and-so did this exact same look. Then you got to apply it. That's what, that just happens through the course of a season. Scotty, it's Eric um, from WDRB. You had uh, 29 field goals, I think, and they listed 18 of them as layups. That's a pretty good offensive execution. Some games you just, I know Jeff Wall says, sometimes you just got to score and uh, and beat teams. And uh, and that's that's high level there, 60% six, of your possessions. You well, and, and Eric, they played us different than other people did. They played us one-on-one -on -one and they said, okay, we're going to stop you. Now the next team that comes off, then you got to spray and make the pass. Were we flawless? No. But, but you got to adjust as the season goes on. This was similar to the way Lipscomb played as closer than anybody. Lipscomb just said, we're going to play you one-on-one -on -one in the paint, try to shut you down. And we've worked and worked and worked in individual instruction, in practice, with blocking dummies of finishing at the rim. I, now that you said it, you know, we outscored them points in the paint plus free throws, which was one of our goals. We had 73, and they had uh, 47. That's points in a paint plus free throws. That's pretty good. Well, um, our goal is to outscore the opponent. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I know the last thing you're going to do right now is look at record or look at winning streaks or anything else. But, I mean, I don't know anybody would have written this down on your schedule as Bellman's six in a row and rolling, you know, playing this well, doing this well. You probably would have thought it, but – most people that aren't familiar with you looking at you as a new guy in the league probably wouldn't have. Well, they picked us between the coaches and the media, eighth and ninth. So I think they spoke what they thought. <laughs> yeah. Am, isn't that correct? That's right. The Spugs helped me out. Who, who had us eighth? Yeah, uh, coaches had you eighth, media had you ninth. There we go. Well, the media. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there, there's, there was games, you know, we played at four and there's games at five, six, and seven. But last night, let me tell you how great it is. We got on the bus last night because we're hustling because we're coming right back. Every kid on that bus was watching games in our league. Every single kid. Now, I know we're supposed to put their devices away and all this. And that. Every single kid was watching games in our league last night. We got back and had our meal brought to the hotel. No restaurant. Meal brought to the hotel. And we had it up on the screen. We're watching every game. No, we do. I, I, Eric, I don't, I can't speak to why, what other people thought. I mean, I can't, I, you know, I, I know this people will get on me and say, Oh, you're just optimistic. You're this, that this, this team has been so resilient since July the 5th and, and they've been, they, they, they're incredible to coach, but it what's the great perspective on this team are guys like Pedro, Ethan, Sam DeVault. Well, they, they played and transferred from Belmont, Eastern Kentucky, Indiana State, and uh, Austin Peay. 
and, and they can speak better to this than anybody. Like, you miss a free throw on this team, and there's 14 guys cheering for you. But you're not shooting that free throw for yourself. You're shooting it for the other 14. There's a big difference. You know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm pleading for you to get in your stance and it's stay in there and take some charge right in the middle of the chest, it's not about you. It's you doing it, and they do it for 14 other guys, three managers, five coaches, a strength coach, and a trainer. That's powerful. And that's fun. I'm not. I'm not going to shirt coach. That's fun, man. I know it's harder for coaches, but is there part of this back-to-back -back games, weekends, road trips at home, whatever that the players kind of, kind of like? I mean, just having that extra night on the road and and games, not practice. And I can still hear them in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think they do. You know, they're the young people. I, I always say this: if you're 18 to 22 right now just in the whole big picture of the world, how, how confused would you be right now? Man, when you can grab on something good right now, grab onto it, grab onto it. And I keep saying these young people, you know, they're living through this and they're, they're going to help the next one and the next one and the next one live through tough times. They are. Think how confused. Who's the youngest here? Andrew, you, you the youngest guy probably? Uh, John, uh, you the youngest. You just had a birthday. John, how old are you? Scotty, I'm the youngest Me. with gray hair. How old are you, Jonathan? Would you turn 30? I'm 30, yeah. No, I'm 28, so I think it's me. Right. No, it's you. you get, we got you, Tyler. No, it, it's you guys got to be confused. How would you like to be 18 to 22? But they're, they're I mean, that, that's why, you know, my optimism is off the charts because of them. It's because of them. They're, they're touching people. Y'all have no idea the people that are touching through ESPN Plus, through the stream on the radio. It, it's wild. It's unbelievable the people they're touching. God is the young blood. Uh, real quick, let me let me get a question in here. Uh, you had three guys combined for fifty-seven points between Fleming, Penn, and Bradshaw, but those guys they were kind of stuffing the stat sheet in a lot of other ways. Can you speak to? the overall game impact they have, whether it was Fleming Steels. Yeah, that's a great, great players affect the game a lot of ways. You, you get, you rebound the ball, you rebound your possession, you get deflections, you, you draw a charge. That's what great players do. But the key to this team is they feed off each other. You know, they, they just doing it for each other. It's not like they're doing it for themselves. There's a big difference. There's a huge difference. And, and they're really, I go rebound out of my area. I'm getting it for 14 other guys, not to give me another rebound on the stat sheet. 